Like that's, the, and it's because they're not eating enough fat. And I've just seen this so many times, just anecdotally, like you beg your friend, please just eat some, please just eat some fat, just eat some butter. I'm like, oh, I love butter, but I don't let myself eat it. Please just eat some butter and some high fat cheese just for one week, just do the experiment. And they're like, I was a different person. I, I know you were, I know, I get how bad you felt and you feel so much better. So now I'm gonna give you a huge stack of books to read. You don't even have to read mine read these books and then just try it for a few months and you're going to be a transformed person, your personality, especially you're going to feel so calm and so happy and you're not going to be crying anymore. And all that inflammation and all that pain in your body that nobody could understand is going to go away because you're going to be calm on the inside and the out. So um, yeah, all of that, all of that stuff that goes on because you're just depressed and anxious and all of that, that goes away almost overnight. If you're eating some animal protein and some animal fat, that then that was an amazing thing to experience was just that that's night and day that's like the world comes back to life living color like sometimes within a few hours you'll feel that much better from it so um did, i don't think i forgot anything i think that's everything that went wrong and then things that it's, i did that, right <laughs> that's bananas and to think that all of that suffering did nothing it didn't do anything. I know. It didn't help your health. It didn't it help didn't the planet. Help a single thing that's wrong on this planet. I didn't save animals. I didn't save the soil. I didn't save the rivers. I didn't save the trees. I didn't feed a single hungry person. None of it was true. So I wrecked it and I'm not getting it back. And I didn't even save anybody for it. It's not even like, well, it was worth it because, you know, 2,000 animals weren't blown. It's just none of it's true. So. Well, yeah. okay. So it, it, it's occurred to me recently that when I think about a plant-based diet, a vegetarian diet, a vegan diet, I think of that diet as what I would see at a magazine at a plant-based grocery store. Beautiful plated food, lots of green. Could be a big salad with red peppers and carrots sliced up and this contrast of colors. Yet that doesn't turn out to be what the actual vegan diet is. It's not right. that. It, it, it looks like that and it's marketed like that and maybe things would go better if it were that i don't think they would but what tell us about what a real true vegan diet actually looks like well i would divide vegans into into half into half in half you've got the vegans who are trying like me to eat a super healthy whole grain whatever so you know my diet was brown rice and kidney beans and black beans and oh, udon noodles, like lots of you know whole grain pasta, uh, tofu of course, lots of tofu, um, almond butter, peanut butter, mm, lots of whole grain bread, and then I made a lot of things too. So it would be like, oh, I don't know, vegan cornbread or vegan bones or something you know, like little baked goods. The thing is, it's always going to be heavy on the carbs, and you you just are a carb addict whether you intended to be or not because of that blood sugar thing. So you're just constantly having to put more car carbohydrate into your mouth. So whether it's white flour or, you know, beautiful whole grain, whatever flour, it's, that's what you're craving. So I, when I was a vegan, I never ate white sugar and I never ate white flour. I was really, really strict. I wouldn't eat white rice. I was really strict about it. It only has to be whole grain, whatever. And I can guarantee you, like, it's just a fact. I destroyed my insulin receptors anyway. It didn't make any difference, but I thought it was better. So I was doing all of that. So you have those people like me who are really trying to have this be the healthiest that they can be. So they, you know, you're trying that and you have some vegetables and I never liked fruit. So fruit, I don't care, but you know, they'll eat fruit, whatever. So all of that. Um, so that's like the healthy ones. And then you've got the ones who are like, oh, I have to do this. It's the right thing to do. Uh, I don't really want to cook though, because it's too much work and I don't actually like cooking. So as long as it's called vegan, I'm going to eat it. And these are like potato chip vegans. So they eat Oreo cookies and they eat potato chips and they eat a lot of sugary junk for the most part. And as long as there's no butter in it, they're fine with it. And they just fall apart. I mean, I, that is just, it's just junk. I mean, it's just potato chips and Coca-Cola essentially. So those, I feel very bad for those people. I, there's just no way. If, you, if you're not going to cook, you really can't do that diet. There isn't any way. I mean, I guess if you had a lot of money, you could buy a ton of takeout food if you could go to the right restaurant. But I just, it just doesn't seem feasible. It's like, it's just too hard. I guess if you lived in New York and you knew where all the vegan restaurants were or some really yeah. groovy place, maybe in California, I don't know. 
I don't, I don't, I don't see it's feasible. If you don't, if you're not going to cook, I don't see how you can do it. So you've got the junk food vegans and then you have the more like the whole grain vegans, I guess I'd call them. Um, but nobody's like, and I did eat salad pretty much every day, but nobody's living on that. I mean, that's like 80 calories, no matter how much of it you eat, it's really just water uh, yeah. with some dressing. And, and if you're eating vegan, the dressing is going to be pretty grim. So uh, yeah, there's really not, it's just that's not. that's uh, that's what people are pitched though and that's what people think no. and so they can't imagine when i'm telling somebody like like the actual numbers with sustainability say with with raising cattle in this country and the, the numbers you hear about methane and all that stuff when i'm explaining to somebody that there's a deep distrust in, in the things i'm trying to educate on because they think for sure big you know big cattle or big dairy are the ones putting out these messages when it's like no if you go plant-based you are still very much very much putting your money in the hands of people in the processed food industry but you don't you don't assume that you just think i'm feeding my local spinach grower <laughs> near that one. Like, i mean you can try like i've grown a lot of my own food i had lots of gardens in my life i've supported a lot of community supported like the csa people and you you know you buy in and then they bring you the big bags of veggies and all that but i mean you can't live on salad you're not a cow you're not going to do that like you're going to have to eat something else at the end of the day it's there's just not enough calories in it there's not enough energy for a human being to live on that like i just there's nothing in it but water really it's there's not much to it so that's like the joke about chinese food oh you're always hungry you know 20 minutes later it's yeah it's because it's all vegetables so it just doesn't stick to your ribs and then you're hungry and then you're hungrier still and then you're starving. I mean, it just, it doesn't last. So yeah. And then they, they don't, the thing that I did not understand as a vegan, that was really kind of the hard, the hard realizations was just the nature of agriculture and how much that's the problem. That's like, oh, people are destroying the earth. Look how bad humans are. All right, fine. But how are we doing it? That was always my question. Like, how did, why did we do this? Like, where's the, where's the cutoff point? Like, wh were we good ever? Were we always doing bad things? So then, you know, it's like all this reading and trying to figure out the history of the human race, the monster and destroyer part. Like, when did that, why did we start hurting our planet? That seems so crazy. And, you know, the answer is, yeah, it's called agriculture um, because that's what it is. It's like literally clearing all the life off the land and then just using it for humans. So it's mass extinction. Um, there's no way to do it sustainably. It's, you can't, you're destroying the soil every time you do that. So that's when the destruction starts and it moves very quickly across the globe. The moment somebody starts doing it, you have to take over your neighbor's land because you've destroyed yours. So now you've got imperialism and genocide. You have to have a military. Um, and this is it. This is this tremendous kind of downward spiral that we've been on now for 10,000 years. We've taken all the land that could be taken. There's nothing left. Right, 98% of the old growth forests and 99% of the world's prairies are gone. And the reason they're gone is because we decided we wanted to eat wheat. So that's what did it. It's, this is how the annual grass, grasses got the humans on their side to conquer the forests and the perennial grasses was by getting us addicted to grain. And then, you know, our whole way of life revolves around it. Um, and then every time that we build a little city, and we were relying on the countryside and we use up all that soil. Now we need an army, go out and conquer the next valley, take all their stuff. Oops, that collapsed. All right, take the next valley. Or you'll see like around the Mediterranean, you know, there's just empire after empire after empire after empire. As this one collapses, the next one starts, this one collapses, the next one starts, just goes around the entire Mediterranean. And when you think of things like Italy or Northern Africa, that is not what that land once looked like. You know, it was cedar forest so thick that sunlight never touched the ground. And all that's left is sort of scraggly brush and exposed rock. That's not what Italy is supposed to look like. It is what it looks like after, you know, a few thousand years of doing agriculture. Same with Northern Africa, but that's all entirely man-made desert through there. Um, that used to be the Roman Empire. And they just yeah. took it all. There's nothing yeah. left. So that's the problem. And as a vegan, I couldn't face that because I had decided at age 16, that you know the the foods of agriculture were the ones that were peaceful and kind and good for animals and going to feed the world and isn't this great stuff and I, they, there's no way this could be wrong, but then 
all my own experiments, growing my own food, as well as everything that I was researching, I just kept coming to the same, hitting that same ideological wall of like, no, the problem is agriculture. This is when the real horrors begin. The human race against the planet, the human race against other humans. This is the horror. This is when we become the monsters and destroyers. But I couldn't face that as a vegan. So that was one of the re relief points for me coming out of being a vegan was, all right, here's all these books I've read. Here's all this information that I've gathered. And I am finally now ready to actually engage with it and to say, okay, if this is true, what does it mean? Is it true? It does look like it's true. I can finally face it, this is true. <laughs> uh, because I'm ready to just set aside the grain and say, maybe that wasn't the best thing. Uh, not actually the foods of peace and justice and love and you know, gentle animals and all of that. Like it just, that's not what it was. It's in fact, biotic cleansing. So they need to understand that because um, the one thing I, that I always try to say to the vegans is like, you have the right values. You know, the th what is motivating you, you it, what's deep in your heart that motivates your life is exactly correct. You know, you love the animals, you want justice, you want peace, you want the, the planet to be protected and cosseted and, you know, and you want all the bad things to stop. I get it. Like I do too. You, you really, you want that so badly that you're willing to have starve yourselves. Um, it's just the information that you have isn't the full information. All you have is factory farming. You don't understand that it's way bigger than factory farming. It really is agriculture. It's the, you know, the basis of civilization itself is the problem. And when you can wrap your minds around that, you're gonna make different choices. So, you know, it's just, if, if, if you're so ideologically bound that you're not able to listen to a conversation about this or participate, um, that's a problem. You know, like we're supposed to keep flexible, flexible brains throughout our lives. That's really what being a grown-up is, is you're supposed to be able to change your mind um, and keep engaging with other grown-ups so that we can decide as a group what's the best thing to do. Um, and that's called democracy. And it's a really good thing. And I'm glad that people figured that out. Like we all should have a voice, but it means we have to be able to talk to each other. And if you're at a point in your life where you're terrified to listen to somebody, where it makes you so angry that you can't listen to somebody, there's something wrong with that, right? And you need to calm that down and try to find some way to open it back up a little bit, just take in like two or three sentences of what I've said and wrestle with it. Go ahead, let yourself think it over, turn it over in your mind for a few days. Could it be true? What if it's true? Will I die if it's true? You won't die, it's just information. I promise, I know it feels incredibly threatening sometimes, but you, you don't have to feel that bad about it. It is just information and it's worth engaging because if I'm wrong, well then I'm wrong and that's fine. And you can write me a note about how I'm wrong you can write your own book about how I'm wrong. Um, I'm always open to information. So if you can find stuff that tells me that this is all wrong and I've got it completely wrong, I am more than happy to, to listen to that because I'd love to be wrong because this is bad. I mean, what's happening on the planet is really bad. Um, it would be easy if it was just factory farming. That I can see an end to, but we've really backed ourselves into a corner here. It's like 85% of the calories that every human being eats now it comes directly from agriculture. There's way too many of us. Like we really have to back our way out of this one slowly and all the institutions are headed in the wrong direction. So yeah. it's grim. It's not that there aren't solutions. It's just that I don't know how to get them from here to there.